maybe that word investigating is a good word because I'm saying question. And it's not maybe questioning it as in doubt. It's investigating it to find the truth. That's a good way to put it. Uh, and, you know, for me, it, it was from the very beginning, it was it was me investigating this this idea of ick. Mm. You know, and when you grow up in the Christian world, everything is dualistic. Heaven, hell, good, bad, right, wrong. You know, right, right. God, Satan, everything, everything is dualistic. Your entire your entire way you're brought up is dualistic. So the idea of <clears throat> the philosophy of ick is totally foreign. Right. And even um, though it's a relig- monotheistic religion of one God, it's not oneness. No, it's not, you know, it's, it's monotheism versus panentheism. Right. You know, and, and <clears throat> so everything is dualistic, everything in your life, good, bad, rich, poor, so on and so forth. Um, so the hardest thing for me to grasp was, and I didn't know I was having a hard time grasping it <laughs> until I realized that's what it was. And, you know, that was the concept of ik, ikunkar. And, um, and then I was, uh, I was driving to Atlanta for a leadership conference. And, um, so I just do what I normally do when I was doing long drives. I would find a YouTube video to listen to. Right. And <clears throat> Seth Paul sings early, uh, early, uh, YouTube were actually audios, not videos. And he did a full explanation word by word of the Momanter. Right. Yeah, and, I know that one. And he did Ick. And about halfway through that hour long kata is when I went ding. And I don't know that I fully understood it, but I grasped the concept enough that I knew I was sick. Interesting. Yeah. You know, and, and I think when I've learned through this, I started out with the thought process that having grown up in the West, having grown up under a Western uh, theological philosophy and <clears throat> that at, I was somehow hindered or had been hindered in my path and that only I'll use the term converts, even though I don't really like it a whole lot, but I'll use it. Um, converts could truly understand that. But the more I got to know more six, the more I realized that the story of finding of guru finding you or you finding guru, whichever way that works are all very similar hmm. because okay. we all come from this background you could be born in the sicky and you could live sicky your entire life and not be sick. Right. Right. You know, and, and, and the same holds true for Christianity or anybody else. You can grow up in the faith, but if you don't live it, if you don't experience it, if you don't study it, if you don't do that, then are you really? And, and what I've been finding out my own discovery is that, yeah, I'm not as unique as I thought I was. You know, um, there's so many people out there with like me, whether they're, you know, grew up in a Western background or they came up in a Punjabi family and they just never paid a whole lot of attention, you know, or didn't practice, you know. Yeah, I mean, you have that, right? Oh, for six, we call it the dollar buffet. Have you heard that phrase before? No, uh uh-uh. On Sunday, you go matatek, you put a dollar down, and then you go eat longer. Mm-hmm. So it's the dollar buffet. And yeah. every Sunday, you're doing that ritual. Right. You're not paying attention to anything. You're not absorbing anything. You're not contemplating anything. You're just going through the motions of your faith, quote yeah. unquote faith. I mean, it, it, you know, I grew up going to church every Sunday. Right. You know, and, and, you know, you use it through the entire service. You sing all the hymns, you do all of those things. You go to Sunday school, you go to vacation Bible school in the summer, you do all of those things. Um, And it's, it's, it's 
no different. And I say it's no different. The experience that the, that the way we practice is if you don't practice your faith, then you'll never truly understand your faith. And it's, it goes for any, any religion. I mean, it got to the point where, you know, I was going to church on Christmas and Easter because that's where my parents went to church and I was not going to embarrass my mama. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that I wanted to be there. Right. I said, if the whole family doesn't show up for Christmas and Easter, they're going to look at mama like there's something wrong with her. Where are your children? <laughs> right. You know? So um, it's a little bit of a tirade, but yeah. It, no, you know, it, that's, that's the whole thing, right? I think um, a lot of us are stuck in those kinds of things. Even, even being aware, um, being aware of all that and trying to be a better sick there are still parts of you that fall into routines or patterns without thinking about it or without really understanding it or trying to understand it. Life gets busy, right? Like we have to pay the bills still. We have to take care of our families. We got kids or whatever it is. We got all these things that we think of, we got to do even sick wise. And then we make them into the ritual. Just like what you said, we do that all the time. We're telling our kids, you got to sit here. You got to be quiet. You're not going to embarrass us at the Gurdwara. <laughs> right, right. And that's not the point of being there. 